Hey, what's up everyone? This is Isaiah from Therapy Today. Now, you all know that I've been watching some of Ren's videos, been reacting to some of his music, and basically one of the top comments that I've been getting is, hey, you need to watch his million subscribers video. It says, defining success as part of the title. So I'm gonna check out the video today, see what all the hype is about. Obviously he's got 1.38 million subscribers at this point. So this guy's a big deal. And he's sharing a very important message about resilience and being able to persevere, even though it looks like things are hopeless through chronic illness, through mental illness, through lots of challenges. So I'm glad to be able to watch some of his story, to be able to watch some of his work and listen to some of his music and to be able to share my thoughts on that. I think that's a great privilege of mine that I have. I do wanna remind you all, if you're new to the channel or have been watching, please do like and subscribe. That helps the channel to grow. But also in this Mental Health Awareness Month, I would encourage you all to donate to a mental health nonprofit. And in order to encourage you to donate to that mental health nonprofit, go ahead and DM me the receipt from your donation and you will be entered into a giveaway from our channel at the end of the month. My links for either my email address or my Instagram handle are in the description below. So join me in contributing to mental health awareness this month as we do this giveaway. And with all that being said, let's dive into the video. I want to keep this short and sweet because I wrote something that I want to share with you. But um First of all, I just want to say how grateful I am. Um, I've reached a million subscribers on YouTube, which is a flipping huge milestone. Um, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who supported my music over the years, whether you're newly on board or have been here for a while. I wanted to say thank you to the YouTube reaction community who have gotten behind my stuff in a big way and really helped me reach this goal. So thank you guys. Um, yeah, I wanted to read this 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 passage that i wrote about success is too much for me to remember right now so bear with me but yeah success to me means that i have a responsibility that transcends me that's a really interesting way to start talking about success i think a lot of times we think about success as a personal thing especially for something like youtube and from what i understand he produces creates the beats for and obviously records the vocals for a lot of his own music so i can imagine it'd be very easy for him to take all the credit for his success and blowing up on YouTube. But to lead off right away saying that my success is about more than just me, that's a really interesting take and I wanna see where he takes that. I will say, by the way, I didn't say this in the intro, I have not watched this video before. I know some of the commenters say I should know all the background, have some informed opinions walking into these videos. And then there are some other commenters who say that, oh, you know, it's not really a reaction video if you're watching it for the second or third time. So there's no way to split the difference between that. So I'm just putting it out there here at the beginning that I have not watched this before. And this is my first watch and first reaction to all of these things. So bear with me in that. Just know what you're signing up for as you're watching this video. If I have a platform where people are paying attention, then I feel like it's my duty to make that count. It's far more important than my aspirations with music and what I could personally gain. There's a saying that stuck with me recently, which was a rising tide lifts all ships. Somehow, by finding success for myself has meant that I can find success for the people around me. And that makes me feel very rich. That's really cool too. I think a lot of celebrities, a lot of artists who have made it big, tend to have these reputations around being a little more self-centered, that they're always grinding, always trying to grow their own success. And his tack is to look at how having this platform allows him to serve other people, allows him to inspire and bring on the success of others. And that's really cool to see how community-minded he is when it comes to his success and his growth as an artist and as a person. I'm in a very strange position right now where I owe much of my success to the most destructive force in my life which has been the turbulence of my physical and mental illness. The thing that has by far brought me the most pain has been a source of constant, constant inspiration, which ironically led to creations which brought me the most joy. Creating art which means something to somebody else and can potentially be a companion to somebody else in the dark justifies my own pain. And I desperately needed that to be justified. Wow, that's really powerful. That juxtaposition between his own struggle that has led to so much difficulty for him has also led to the inspiration which brought about so much success. And it is really amazing too to hear the energy and the emotion that he pours into all of his creative works and being able to take that pain, take that struggle and use it as a way to channel that creativity and be able to serve others. That's a really strong argument for 
a lot of what we try to do in therapy is that we take struggles that we have, whether it's mental health, whether it's physical health, whether it's something else that's going on, and to be able to reframe that in a way that leads to empowerment and leads to more kindness, more love, more connection with others, rather than isolating, rather than disempowering, rather than discouragement. And that's what he's talking about, transforming that very painful and traumatic experience, a number of years from what I understand, into something that has become empowering for him and has empowered him to encourage others as well. There are a lot of people alive today who live in the dark. It's a place that I'm very familiar with. In the peak of my health problems, I was severely underweight. All my meals had to be restricted and blended, and I was so tired that I couldn't participate in life. I couldn't socialize, I couldn't watch films, I couldn't read. My bones constantly hurt. Even standing in the shower was excruciating and exhausting. And this went on for years, with no answers. Nobody could have ever convinced me during that time that my pain and suffering would be a source for something good, because it felt insidious. Nobody could have ever convinced me that something constructive can come from hurting every day. Wow. I can really feel how he still feels that. The struggle mentally of being able to reconcile the idea that I can't stand in the shower, my bones hurt, I can't even get out of bed, and you're telling me this could be good for something or somebody. And this message is so important for people who struggle with all kinds of chronic illness. What I most commonly see, of course, is chronic mental illness. And this is a message that I need all of my clients probably to get, even everyone else who isn't seeing a therapist, because life gets really hard sometimes, and it's hard in the moment to envision how this can be good. How is this something that I can look back on and appreciate in the future? Because we get this idea that the suffering is bad. And absolutely, it hurts. It's very difficult in that moment. But I want to echo what Ren says. And I think the idea behind that is that we need to allow ourselves to be surprised sometimes. We need to open ourselves to the possibility that things might be transformed in some way. There's no guarantee, there's no promise. It's not like if you have some kind of chronic illness, you're guaranteed to blow up on YouTube like he did. I think there were a lot of factors that contributed to that. You know, of course, including his own musical and creative talents. But there is something to that, that just because we think there can be no reason to the suffering that we're going through, doesn't mean that there is no reason and that we can use that as a source of encouragement for both ourselves and for other people. And sometimes we just don't know how that can happen quite yet. I do think he's doing a great job balancing that kind of toxic positivity of just saying like, hey, you need to cheer up. This is all for a reason. And also validating the pain that people who are in that kind of situation are going through. He acknowledges himself in the midst of that. There's no way he could have envisioned how things would turn out. But because he persevered, he was able to see how things turned around. But I'm here to tell you that if you are hurting every day, don't be afraid. One thing I know to be a certain, to be a constant law of the universe, is that life is inconsistent. Life is beautiful and life is hideous. Life is kind and life is cru cruel. Dancing inside this dichotomy and inconsistency makes me know that you won't hurt forever. Whether that comes from resolution of what you're going through or acceptance of where you are you won't hurt forever. Oh, I love that message. Yeah, life is inconsistent. A lot of times, especially when we're in the worst moments of our lives, it feels like it will go on forever. I do want to acknowledge that. Sometimes those days when you're dealing with constant pain or constant migraine or constant injury or mental illness or brain fog or whatever it might be for you, it feels like it will never let up. It feels like it will never end. And I do appreciate that he also says that it's not necessarily all just coming from the resolution of whatever illness or problem you're going through, but sometimes it's making peace with the way things are. And that does happen for people. It's hard to imagine when you're in the midst of it, but it does happen. And I appreciate his encouragement that that kind of healing, whether it's physical healing or a kind of mental healing and making peace does happen for people. And we just don't know what it will look like for each individual person. So I, I do appreciate him encouraging people to keep taking that next step, keep going through the next day. You don't know yet whether or not your pain conceals gold. 
It definitely conceals wisdom and it's definitely a catalyst for filling you with empathy. So stand strong, my friends, and don't let the darkness consume you because once you know the dark and become intimate with it, you become very capable of wielding the light. You could be instrumental for changing this world for the better. There's nothing humble about shrinking or doubting yourself because you are large. You can be ferocious and you could be magnificent. I'm just going to say these are all good points and you can just assume that I'm saying that if I happen to not say that in a future pause that I take on this video. But yeah, he's absolutely right. There's something powerful about somebody who's been through it before being able to say, I see where you are, I've been there, or I've been in some place similar, let me walk with you through it. And that's what he's offering. And there's something really powerful with that in shared stories of addiction, of trauma, of abuse, of any other issues with mental health that that's why we have support groups because shared stories bring that connection and there's wisdom in that like he's talking about. And that pain can give us a purpose to move forward. It's not that if we're suffering, we suddenly have this responsibility to other people, but as we're going through that journey, we can bring that to other people and have that be a source of connection. And that is what allows people to get through the painful parts of their days, of their months, of their years. For the medical industry, who too often let people fall through the cracks, it's your duty to do better. For the people living in the light, who have either stepped out of their shadow or have never had to walk beside it, it's your responsibility to pull out, put out untainted love. Our own greed, desire to ferociously expand and decisions rooted in self-interest can benefit ourselves in a material sense, but can be very destructive to the hive and the world around us, ultimately hurting ourselves. And so I don't know a lot of the history behind this phrase of untainted love. So that might be something that comes as I watch more of his stuff. I do feel that call out to the medical industry, which I am a part of as a mental health counselor. It is important that sometimes as professionals, we feel like we have to have the answer. And some of those cases are really tough, especially the chronic ones where I feel like, well, I'm not a medical doctor. I can't directly help you with your migraines. I can't directly help you with managing your chronic illness, but what I can do is I can walk with you through that. And it's part of my responsibilities as I've been called into this position of trust to be able to serve my clients in that way so that they don't feel neglected, so that they don't feel like they've fallen through the cracks as they might in other systems. So we really must consider that if we're going to step into a bright future. As humans, we have an incredible potential and it would be a shame to throw it away. So community, humanity, and changing our relationship with the natural world so it leans more towards homeostasis must be a priority, priority number one. If you're watching this and there's a knot tied up in your stomach with bitterness, anger, or hatred for your fellow human being, be with it, feel it, understand it, express it, and then let it go. You're hurting. Give yourself love, forgive yourself, and then project that love outwards and the anger will pass. Yeah, that's really powerful. What he's talking about is that there is a dark side to us and we've talked about that in his high rent video. But the more we try to hide away from that darkness, the more we try to pretend that it doesn't exist and push it away, the stronger it becomes because we're ignoring it. We're allowing it to grow and to fester. And when he invites these people watching this video to engage with that, to allow yourself to acknowledge that, yeah, I feel this way, that's a catalyst for change. That's a catalyst for being able to accept that emotion and be able to do something with it to, like he talks about, transform that into love, moving towards harmony with our fellow human beings, with our planet, and with ourselves. We have a decision in every interaction to tilt the world towards heaven or hell towards Jannah or Jahannam, utopia or dystopia, and some people's ideas of heaven will be another's image of hell. So tread carefully, but treat those differences with respect. Tapestries are made beautiful because of the variety and the sum of their parts. <clears throat> Thank you to one million people inside this rich tapestry for the opportunity for me to try and spread my own vision of what I believe to be good. And thank you for justifying my pain. Thank you. I love you. Well, that's pretty powerful. I'll say definitely worth the watch. He makes a lot of good points. And what I find really fascinating about not just Ren, but about a lot of clients 
that I've seen who struggle with chronic illnesses, whether physical or mental, or other really outspoken people who have gone through similar kinds of experiences, is that these people who have suffered so much can be some of the most generous, kind individuals who are not going to judge, who are not going to be selfish, even though if we talk about how much they've suffered, they probably have the most right to be selfish out of the general population. That they've suffered so much, have lost so much, have had so much taken away from them. If they were really selfish and just looking out for themselves, I couldn't even blame them for that. And so even beyond what he's saying in terms of his sense of responsibility or wanting to give back or wanting to support others in all of this, that there's a growth that happens as we struggle as we wrestle with the dark side of ourselves, as we wrestle with maybe the depression and the frustration and the disempowerment that might come with some kind of chronic illness or some other kind of tragedy in our lives. And so if you have a religious bent, that might sound like sanctification or for mental health, that might be growth and development. And that all comes, like he's talking about, through community, through connection with ourselves and with others. And it doesn't happen in isolation. And some of the most powerful stories of growth come through some of the most tragic stories as well. So I do appreciate you all putting me onto this video. I'm glad I watched it. I'm glad for his attitude and the way that he sees his struggles now. I'm sure there are still continuing physical and mental health challenges, but all in all, it's a really amazing summation of how he's learned from all of this. And again, I think if you had told him or anyone else at the beginning of that journey, hey, this is what's going to happen. This is what you're going to learn and this is how you're gonna live. I don't think he would have been ready for that, but it's all of the struggle, all of the learning day to day, all of the perseverance. That seems to make it possible for us to learn these kinds of lessons. He seems to be a better person for it. And it's transformed into this thing where he's been able to serve and uplift so many people because of it. So I'm thankful for that. Well, you all, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, we are having a giveaway through the end of this month, May of 2024. So donate to a mental health nonprofit, DM me the receipt, and you'll be entered into a drawing at the end of the month. Please do like and subscribe. That helps the channel to grow, allows me to continue doing these reaction videos and other videos that are topical about mental health. And so we can advocate and raise awareness about mental health and the counseling process. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you all next time.